Hello everyone, this is Ebo and welcome to today's AFK Journey video. So in today's AFK Journey video, we are going to talk about the power level ratings for the various characters in the early game of AFK Journey. So this is to cater to the newer players that just joined us for the Bon Voyage uh, beta test so that you guys know what units to go for. So if you guys want to know the tier list ratings for this unit, I actually released a video, which is the beta sale early game tier list, progression tier list. So that tier list pretty much tells you what are the characters that you should use. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about the power level rating for all the characters for the different game modes in the game itself. So I'll link up the video on the card above, right? The video is on screen right now. And uh, in today's uh, early game power level tier rating, I'll give a tier rating for the different game modes for all the characters in the early game. So your story pushing, your AFK challenge pushing, as well as the various... Uh, early game contents that you can play such as dream realm arena as well as probably i can elaborate if you can reach the afk challenge 100 right so within this beta sale test itself right the whole test will be a one week period so honestly one week is really not enough for you to reach the mid game nor the end game and there are certain units that you won't have any access to so that's for that's just some disclaimer for you guys to know and obviously i'll be rating the units with your usual tier list letters so ss tiers obviously are the meta characters for the various contents s tier units are pretty good units like they they are not the strongest for the category but they are very very powerful they are very, very useful for the thing a tier usable not the best but they're decent b tiers are usually units which you kind of want to avoid so this is how i give my power level rating for the different units and without further ado let us jump into today's power level rating let's go okay so this is the early game power level rating for all the characters that is going to be available for the bon voyage beta test personally i excluded the hippogene and celestials because based on previous experience they they were not available for usage at least during the seven day period so they're probably not going to be accessible for players this time around as well because seven days is just not enough for you to do the 300 summons required to get to them so i'll exclude them and before i begin just a few disclaimers number one i'll be doing the early game mid game and late game power rating for the global server once the global release date is closer so if you guys like uh such guide like contents do remember to like and subscribe to see more and this one is based on the current version that i'm playing which is version 1.010 so in the future when global drops things might change so this power level rating will also change based on how the units are adjusted closer to global so we will stay tuned for that this is definitely going to change slightly if there's some major changes to come in the next patch and the second thing i want to disclaim is this power level rating or early game stage is i'll say gauge of the previous beta test which i think most players should be around level 100 to 120 which is i'll say like a good benchmark where you can progress in one week and uh, some of these units they will be pretty mediocre in the early game, but they can be super powerful in the late game based on their EX weapon, based on their ascension skills, based on having more stats, or even based on how good they are against the meta at the different stages of the game. So yeah, like there will be other power level rating videos, so stay tuned for that. And lastly, this list is based on my personal experience playing the PTR server. So I've been playing the game for, I'll say close to half a year, five to six months. And uh, if you guys have been playing the game for as long as I have, and if you guys have your own opinions, do feel free to comment in the comment section down below. But this is, uh, I'll say, just a early game power level rating for the early game players as well as the Bone Voyage players. So without further ado, let us start today's list. So first of all, I'll go by the factions of the unit. First of all, we have Vala. So Vala, I'll say, is all around pretty powerful unit, at least within the Light Barrel faction. Pretty good early game, pretty good uh, mid game and late game. But in terms of the early game content push, bossing and arena, she is a pretty usable unit because she offers decent damage, a little bit of disruptive ability by lowering the energy of an enemy unit, which allows you to like snipe off key targets within arena, right? There are certain teams which require certain units to function really powerfully and Vala can snipe off those units. So this unit is definitely usable in all the contents. Definitely not the best because there are other better ones which I'll talk about later. But if you do decide to go for the light bearer side and 
you have Vala, she is definitely a good unit to train up for you to push for more contents. And then for Ella, next unit, I think Ella in the early game is on the weaker side. Like her niche is repositioning of unit, providing some magical defense buff in the late game, as well as, uh, I mean, magical defense debuff in the late game, as well as also providing additional damage as a DPS with her buffing ability. So this buffing ability is only single target based on the early game stage. So this unit has a decent bossing damage output, but will get better as time goes by. But in the early game, I think content pushing this unit is not that strong. Like repositioning is not very core in terms of uh, story pushing. It's also not very core in terms of uh, overpowering stronger units. So yeah, I don't recommend her. In terms of arena, same thing. Like they're just way better units that I think her gimmicks, at least in the early game, is not that good. And it probably shouldn't be something that early game players want to focus on. So that's for Ella. Then next we have Rowan. So Rowan is one of the better or the best early game light barrel unit that this faction can offer because of how amazing he is as a support utility character so the gimmick for this unit is that it's he's a healer slash battery character which heals a lot of hp based on the percentage hp of the units being killed so if you're healing a tank by 50 60 percent it's got to be a lot of hp right compared to like uh, a carry but because the potion heals so much hp it's really good for cheesing out certain contents which just requires your tank to survive for a little bit longer then rowan will be able to use his ultimate which gives your team energy which allows them to use their ultimate faster or cycle through their ultimate faster as well so that's why this unit is amazing for content pushing your afk stages your story stages really really good and for bossing this unit doesn't offer much in terms of the damage compartment but allowing your teammates to survive longer allowing your teammates to cycle through their skills faster is also very worthy of a pick to be used in the early stages for your dream realm your bossing contents so for pvp definitely an amazing character because of the massive heal that this unit can provide and the energy providing ability for your team which allows certain unit skill to shine even faster because there are certain units with really powerful ultimates that really wants rowan's energy charging to get the ultimate out faster so that's why this unit is amazing for arena as well as content pushing overall one of the better light bearer units in the early game so if you guys get him good for you you guys are gonna push through your contents faster and one thing that's good for rowan is that i think he's quite easy to upgrade in the early game because he's available in the uh emporium shop itself but i won't really focus too much on the support i'll focus more on my carry so that's for rowan then we have uh, atalanta i think i think atalanta is just a very very mediocre unit all around i'm not going to talk too much about this unit a little bit of damage a little bit of aoe a little bit of disable with the stuns and repositioning but you just have i'll say vala which is a strictly better character that is in the same star category so i don't recommend anybody to use atalanta like another thing about her is that you you can't really control where she moves right so there's a there's this gimmick with the light bearer character that they like to jump around the map so this is one thing which is very bad in the arena because you have no control of where they jump they could drawn to their own death or they could jump into a disable and then die from there so that's why i don't recommend atalanta at least in the early game there's no gimmick that supports this unit in the early game then we have valen so okay valen right in terms of content pushing i'll say it's decent because you do get a few copies of this unit uh in the early game which gives this unit a little bit more stats and uh this a little bit more stats gives this unit more survivability to do what he want to do which is aoe damage to kill as many as many enemies as possible but um this unit doesn't offer any survivability so if your units are way too overpowered he won't be able to survive long enough and if he can't survive he can't do what he do best which is do damage that's why he's like pretty mediocre everywhere else because like uh, this unit doesn't offer much as he doesn't have his inbuilt survival he's more of an aoe based character so not that good in bossing and in arena like i mentioned there's going to be a bunch of really meta grave one units so you're going to see them and he's going to die quickly and he's not going to use his skill and he's going to be useless so btl over here but still a good story pusher because aoe allows you to clear some stages and being able to get multiple copies early on allows you to power this unit up in terms of tiers faster so that's for valen then for uh merrily like this unit has been renamed to merrily by the way yeah so for merrily's case right this unit i'll say is uh strictly a bossing character 
like I I I, I think even into the late okay, this unit is a very very powerful bosser in the late game. But today's video, I'm not gonna talk too much about it. But at least in the early game, she's still decent for single target boss damage. But you have better choices out there in terms of every other content. I think she's pretty bad because her ultimate will, like I mentioned, she, this is a gimmick for this faction. Like they like to jump around, so her ultimate will cause her to jump around. So if you're a beginner, you don't know the skill of the enemy unit. You're gonna jump into your own death, or you're gonna jump into a disable, and then she's gonna die from that because she's quite paper being a DPS unit. And that's why I don't recommend people to use her, at least in the early game, if you're a beginner, like you don't know the mechanic, so you have better units. But then this unit is going to be a super saiyan in the late game, but that is if you're playing the game in the long run in the future. So we'll talk about that later, but at least in the early game, this is where this unit lies in terms of the three ratings for the game modes you can play. Then we have uh, Mirel. So Mirel is, I'll say, pretty powerful in the early game, in a sense, because the damage numbers that this unit can do okay mira is a mage character that deals aoe damage with the ultimate and very big numbers she's a little slow like she takes quite a while to charge up her skill before she can release her ultimate but if you do manage to pull it off right she's quite a good like wave clearer right you can pair her with rowan so she gets to her ultimate faster and the aoe prowess of this unit at least in the early game is nothing to be scoffed at so Pretty decent, this character will fall off eventually, but in the early game, this character is quite a good character for you to use, at least for her AoE damage potential. So this is Muriel. Then we have Team Major. So my take about Team Major, at least in the early game, hasn't changed. Based on the previous tier list, I call her a filler unit. She is still a filler unit in the early game because she's a tanker, but she wants to be a damage dealer. But she doesn't have any inbuilt, I'll say like survival skill, which keeps her sustainable as she runs around the map to mini stun the target so so I, I i don't really like her at least in the early game i don't recommend people to use her but in the late game i will change of opinions for her so that's for team major then lucius um yeah you you don't have a choice in terms of story pushing i think his shielding ability his self-healing ability his tanking ability is insanely good for you to push through the story contents because i think if you're playing the light bringer side you don't really have a lot of choice in terms of who you want to feel on the front line you only have team major as well as lucius and he's the better one and the kit that he provides is just very defensive just what you need for a tank so he's assessed here for story pushing at least from a tank perspective for arena no i mean for bossing no because uh his kit is very defensive so he doesn't offer any offensive power and that's why he's b tier for bossing a tier for arena because if you need a tank on the front line and you're playing like bringer he's pretty decent for you to use at least before eddie gets his insta kill which is late game so i'll say he's quite good at least a tier in the arena pretty decent frontliner tank if you want to focus on him at least for content pushing part and just a little bit of arena playtime so this unit is pretty good there then we have corin so corin is a shooter slash semi carry uh, that bounces around and like sort of i'll say like deal damage and protect your ally the weakest one for his shooting ability and in terms of story pretty decent like this shooting ability can act as a sort of heal as well because shielding is another way to prolong the life of a unit and his skill shields the weakest ally so sometimes when your weakest ally is under fire is close to dying Corin can um, jump to them shield them keep them for a life for a little longer so that they can use their skill and they help you turn the match around and that's why he's uh, pretty good there like definitely not the best but usable in terms of content pushing then for uh the bossing same thing shielding allows your unit to survive longer and he himself is a semi carry which deals decent damage so i give him an a tier because you can definitely use him even in the early game like this character is really good in the late game as well but he's definitely usable even in the early game then for arena wise i don't recommend because um yeah like in terms of arena i just don't like units that bounce around and they do have a very specific targeting mechanic so other than corin right merrily atalanta as well as vala they like to bounce around but at least for vala's case she bounces around with a mechanic in mind so she targets the weakest enemy or the lowest hp enemy whereas for the other unit they just be bouncing around randomly so you don't know where they will go and you don't know how they'll eat the skills of the enemy that's why i don't recommend this unit to be used in the arena or rather this unit is not gonna be that strong in arena so next we have heaven okay so this unit right hands down one of the best healer in the game 
early mid to late right the amount of heals that having can provide for your team is insane her ultimate is a whole map heal which doesn't care about where your units are so you use her she's gonna pop her ultimate she's gonna keep your whole team healing up and enemies are gonna have a hard time to deal with her so if you combine her with rowan can you imagine like she can repeatedly use her aoe skill to heal up your whole team and then rowan's just gonna cycle through and allow her to use her skill and because you have rowan having a team right they're called the battery combo so uh, one is a battery healer and the other one is a massive healer which provides a bunch of defensive tools for your team so absolutely amazing support at least in the early game even even the mid to late game this unit is just going to be amazing same thing for arena the, the aoe heal that this unit does is just insane i'm just going to not talk too much you guys will realize once the game drops then for bossing wise i'm giving her a tier this unit is like the most defensive unit you'll see like she doesn't provide any form of attack buff any form of attack speed buff but the healing that this unit can provide can keep your whole team healthy which allows them to survive longer for them to jam in a few more hits throw in a few more ultimate for you to edge out in terms of the damage compartment so that's for having uh Aaron. okay so this unit uh at least in the early game pretty weak like uh i think this unit faced the same problem with valen Celezo, right that they are all warrior units that doesn't have too much defensive there no this unit is a rogue unit so the thing about rogue and warrior is that they like to charge on the front line and for aaron's case his shield is based on his own hp so in the early game his hp threshold is really low and even with a shield he dies really quickly as well so yeah not gonna shine but this unit is gonna be a beast late game so we shall we shall, we shall talk about it why in another video then we have the tank of wilder so granny is the other tank which i think is comparable to torrent in terms of how good they are in terms of story pushing as well as arena so granny granny's kit is self heal taunt aoe disable with the ultimate and these are basically what you need for a tank <laughs> like well the best tank you'll get and before eddie gets his ex weapon you i don't think you can kill granny that easily because uh, she's able to use her ultimate gain a lot of uh, defensive buff on herself and then survive really long from there and her ultimate is quite anti-melee so this makes her a good arena unit as well if your enemy runs at least two to three melee units in their team which is very common in the early game right in the battle test because people will be getting like valen people will be using the likes of Seth, shakir which makes this unit pretty good there but um very defensive unit so not good for bossing so b tier over here so brian brian is the single target carry for wilder so aa right be decent damage uh, with a little bit of hit start from the ultimate a little bit of stun there and uh, good for bossing at least in the early game so that's for brian not going to talk too much then we have and yeah okay this unit has been changed her name now is called parisa okay so par for, for, for parisa's case um pretty mediocre on the board at least in the early game she needs quite a lot of build up for her damage to scale up and she does provide a single target buff but uh, all this will only scale up once she has more stats, once she has more haste to use her skills, and once she has an EX weapon. So in early game, she's pretty weak. I don't advise you guys to invest in her. Uh, her, her synergy with Arrow in the late game is something which I'll talk about once I'm on the late game power level rating. But at least in the early game, Parisa is uh, eh, pretty mad from that. So that's for Parisa. So next we have uh, Kafra, just a uh, pretty bad character all around. <laughs> like uh yeah don't invest in this unit like yeah she dies really easily doesn't do much maybe there's a bit of disable but you have better units out there for disable then next we have Laika so I put Laika in very very high regards in the early game because Laika has this skill which provides attack speed as well as damage for your team so attack speed means your your team is going to use their skill faster hit a little faster and she provides an AoE skill which reduces defense so a pretty decent disabler sem semi carry as well as a buffer for the team so s tier for content pushing not the most meta but i'll say she's close to being uh 
must have as well in the sense like uh, good to have she's a good to have not a must have but really, really good across the board and in arena being able to have the first movers advantage makes her ss tier character no matter what combine it with her aoe damage potential as well as the physical defense debuff she can provide she's quite a good character all around in the early game so next we have damien i don't really like damien like people always push to me how good this unit is but every single time i try to use this unit he fails so badly because this unit doesn't appear on the field he summons a chariot which only inherits 80 percent of his hp so in the early game this unit doesn't have a lot of stats the chariot dies really easily the heal that the chariot provides is also really low i don't like it i don't recommend it very meh character all around so same thing for arden this unit is uh it's a very bad character early game like all around not a lot of damage the disable has really short duration as well but things will get better for this unit moving forward as you get more power ups on him but in the early game no no i don't recommend you guys okay so i'm gonna end the video here a little bit abrupt but because post editing wise i realized that the whole recording for the whole power level rating is way too long so i'm gonna split this uh, whole content into two parts so the first part i've covered all the Lightbringer characters as well as the wildest characters so in the second part i'm gonna cover the remaining graveborn as well as smaller characters that will be available for you guys so if you guys want to see more do remember to like and subscribe stay tuned for the second video which i'll link in the description down below as well if you guys want to just have a quick hyperlink and thank you very much for tuning in do remember to like and subscribe in order to see more afk journey content and i'll see you guys again in my next video bye guys